is our guest there, guys. Oh, great. We like this guy. Oh, a lot, yeah. He should be on all the time. We should start paying him, too. That's how good he is. You could pay him. I'll pay him out of my own pocket. All right, good. Rashad Jennings with the Giants joins us. You'll take yeah. some money for me, right, Rashad? Yeah, hey, I'm here, man. <laughs> how, how much would it take for you to come on every week? Every week? Uh, we can put together whatever number you're going to put. Just put an extra zero. All right, Make cool. <laughs> That's 50 bucks. You think I'll 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> All right, how excited are you about this team? Why, tell, tell the fans, Rashad, why this team is going to be better than last year's team. Oh, man, for so, so many reasons. But, but first and foremost, it's, this is year three that we are under the same system um, that now has become ours. And so we, everybody knows where to be at, where to line up at. We have names across the board. We have a stout offensive line. Uh, we got guys that can move the ball. And we got, we got somebody on the center that knows how to get it done. And surrounded by a good defense and linked by special team play. So there's a lot of hype in here for us um, to, to go out there and prove right. Now, I agree. Last year, offense was not nearly the problem the other side of the ball was. But And I know preseason, you can't get too crazy, but you guys didn't do really anything in the preseason. Is that anything to be concerned about, or were you just strictly vanilla, not really showing a lot during those preseason games? Well, preseason, preseason has, has its perks. Um, you want to go out there and put on a good performance. Regardless if it's expedition or if it's whatever it is, if you're out there competing against another team, you want to go out there and put a good resume on tape. Um, you know, we, the only thing we need to focus on is eliminating the self-inflicted wounds, um, the pre-snap penalties, um, jumping off sides, and eliminate uh, holding, those type of things. We're going to be in a good position. But as far as preseason goes, you know, that's never a concern um, because that's why it's preseason. You wash – Every single slate, no matter how great, how bad preseason were, is 0-0. Zero, zero. Now, Rashad, one of the things that most of the publications and all the experts are saying is that the Giants have a lot of questions on the offensive line. You just spoke very highly of them. Why is your opinion so differently than most of the quote-unquote experts? Are you comfortable with this offensive line? Yeah, I mean, from from an outsider's view, I mean, you're always going to get people's opinions. You know? Right. And, um Rightfully so. That's 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 what people get paid to do is give opinions. Um, but when you're in this building and you're working every single day um, with, with the units that are out there, and you see the growth, uh, you see how stout they are and physical they are, um, and and you see how we look when we're we're game planning per team. It's 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 something that we can win with. There's no question. We got good offensive linemen. Uh, we got we got physicality, and the guys are smart and know how to protect. So. We just got to go out there and execute the details of, of what we've been practicing and, and, and take it from practice and put it out there in the games on Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays. Seems to me that last year it was a running back by committee. I hated it. Is that the plan this year, or do you really feel that you will get the majority of the snaps and the runs during the course of the, of the season? You know, I, my 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 approach to it is is the same as it's always been, even in college. I don't I don't I don't make those calls, but but what I do is make plays when the ball's in my hand. That mm -hmm. that's my job, and so um, I'm going out there just like I do every single year um, with the mindset of carrying a load. And so that's you know that's what I'm preparing for. That's what I challenge every running back in that room to prepare themselves for. Um, and you know, get ready for the season because it's not about me. It's not about necessarily the running backs. It's about us getting a win and the W column at the end of every game. And so however that displays itself, you know, I'm going to be ready for it. Do I need you to support me on this, Rashad, okay? We're talking with Rashad Jennings of the Giants. I hated the running back by committee because I really believe that you have to get the ball 20, 25 times a game in order to get into a rhythm. You cannot give up um, handoffs to other guys. I just think that a running back, in order to be everything that he wants to be, needs consistent um, takes at it. I, I think he needs to get the ball as much as he can. Yeah, I, I think I think most most people go feel like that across the league, especially speaking from a running back standpoint. Um, you know, you want the ball in your hand as much as you can, but that's with, with all due respect, who doesn't? Um, but well, you know, I, but I was going to ask you, Rashad, is there no is there any part of you of being a running back in these in this era when we've seen how quickly the league can chew you up and spit you out at that position? 
there's no part of you that likes sharing the load to possibly extend to extend your shelf time in the NFL? I think you extend your shelf time in the NFL um, on how you take care of your body in the off season, how you train, how you eat, how you sleep, all the little details that to to get you to the level um, of being able to compete every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. Now, obviously, you know we can get into the science of it too, but at, at the end of the day, you know I, I, I like to always say that there's no such thing as overtraining. Right, and people are growing up. It was like you know, don't overtrain, don't overdo it. There's not a such thing as overtraining. It's called underresting. And so if you if you're being a pro about things and taking care of your body, um, I think you can carry a load. Rashad, you saw uh, the problems the defense had last year. You're now practicing practicing against this new defense, preparing against this new defense. What are some of the differences you're seeing? You see a lot of speed. Um, you, you see guys get into the quarterbacks. Um, you know, you see a stout, stout off his line, fast, fast, very fast um, linebackers, and and umbrella um, by a secondary that can cover every route. And so it, we have we have the younger guys and the vets in in particular places that makes it kind of complete. How much do you guys want to beat the Cowboys? How important is it after a bad season last year to get out of the gate fast? Huge. I mean, you're talking about this is the first game of the season. The first game of the season always sets the tempo. Um, with that being said, not only is it the first game of the season, it counts twice. It's right. in the division right away. It's away. Um, it's, a, it's against a historical rivalry um, that, you know, it was the same, it's the same setup as it was last year uh, when we went down there to play them. And so, you know, obviously – uh, it didn't end in our favor, so we, we, we def- definitely want to make sure we hit it out on the right foot this year. And I'm sure Dallas is thinking the exact same thing. Um, so that's 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 the fun of this game. No matter what I say, I think what, what you know, anybody has to say, I think, that's why we got to go play the game and prove our right. I know it's a different year, different players. They're going to have a different quarterback, but will you use what happened last year in the opener as motivation on Sunday? For me, no. I think if uh, if you do not have enough motivation, period, no matter what team you're playing against, no matter what day, time of the year you're playing another team, if you don't have enough motivation inside yourself as a man to go out there and find a way to win, then you're in the wrong sport. So, you know, I got a lot, of prove, lot to prove to myself. Um, I have a lot to fight for within this organization. And I represent the name I carry on my back and the side of my helmet. So there's enough motivation aside from who we're playing. How was camp different with McAdoo than it was with Coughlin? Um, You know, difference, I I would say, I I like to say this. Um, Well, one, he is a great head coach. Um, And we're talking about, I'm talking about Ben McAdoo as a great head coach, and, and when, you, when you're saying the difference between him and Coach Coughlin, Coach Coughlin is not a person that you can necessarily quote unquote replace. That's a Hall of Famer, you know. Um, he has his own style, he has his own way of success, and it's written in the books. And so, bringing in Coach McAdoo, who is somebody who is very a militant, understand X's and O's, um, and knows how to command a room, that is something. That, that is very, very, very pivotal to being a successful head coach, I believe, going into year eight, um, is having your voice carry in the room, and everybody responds to it. But the one thing that's pretty funny is having him as an offensive coordinator for the last two years, and now he's a head coach. It's funny to watch practice because as a coordinator, you know, if the ball is tipped or picked or dropped on the ground or, you know, some type of turnover, he, you will watch. You will watch Coach McAdoo go off. He'd be livid. <laughs> now as a head coach, and as a pick, you kind of got to. He has his. He, he got to. He has to cheer, as well as want to rip somebody because he's a head coach now. So that's right. always just a funny transition to watch. But um, you know, everybody's again responding to his voice, and uh, he's definitely. He knows a. He knows the architect of his team um, prior to being a head coach. So it's it's fun to watch this continue to grow from where we were last year.
All right, Rashad, before we let you go, I'm just curious. We've had you up in the studio. Did you eat any junk food during the off season? Anything? Anything that was bad for you? <laughs> nah, man. Nothing. I really didn't. I had everything, everything to me, it still was good. It was vegan desserts, gluten and casein free, but I am a sushi head. I will go eat sushi all day long. So I, I got a couple of restaurants in a, in a city that I go to. That I'm, I, I'm in one tonight. I'm doing a little sushi tonight. Yeah, where at? Um, that, it's actually a spot in my neighborhood. That somehow is literally packed every day. Uh, sushi Yasaka on 72nd Street. Okay. Hey, have you ever been to Sushi Agari 46? N- no, but I've heard it's fantastic. Listen, amazing. Agari? Amazing. Yes. It, it is a m- must go. Have you ever had? Have you been to Japan before? No. Uh. Uh-uh. You, Michael will tell you otherwise because he is uh, scared of the world. But I will tell you, sushi in Japan is d- delightful. You need to do it one day. Okay. Right. Rashad, I was in I was in Tokyo and I found the one McDonald's and I went there eight days that's, in a row that's for Michael. chicken McNuggets. <laughs> that's Michael. Uh, man, we gotta we gotta get we gotta expand your horizon. Oh now. God! If you only knew what you were saying right now, Rashad, it's bad. <laughs> anyway, good luck on Sunday. Hopefully, we could have you on a lot. We'll try to work something out right out of my own pocket. That's how well, that's how that's how strongly I feel about it. After this, I go five hundred. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Rashad. Later, man.